the blood that our comes to set us free. Lay cabala ba shantala ba di ba shantala ba. The blood that our comes to set us free. The blood that our comes to set me free. I give you that glory. You are worthy, O God, of my praises. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, by the grace of God, I mean, I am not tell. Just want to appreciate God, worship God for His mercy. And my daughter said it by God's grace as to speak. So uh, we came to the hotel by God's grace to really have a wonderful time with her. I'll be reading with you from um, the book of Isaiah, chapter uh, 43. I might not be able to uh, talk so much because I don't want to disturb uh, the neighbors around. So I'm just going to be so, my voice is just going to be so silent in reading the word of God. I'm actually right now in Duluth, uh, in Duluth, very close to Minnesota, very close to um, where I'm coming from. I just want to appreciate God, thank God for His mercy, for His love upon us in Jesus' name. And for my daughter, uh, she is by God's grace. She is uh, one year older. strong and 
very powerful, mighty instrument in the hands of God and even in your own life. Because the truth is that a lot of things are happening. A lot of things are happening. Spiritually and physically, the devil is attacking families. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, the devil is angry over a godly family. Especially if the family is godly, the devil is attacking families. I wish I could name a lot of attacks. What is sickness? Attacking families with sickness. So attacking families with anger and hatred. Manipulation from the kingdom of darkness is going on right now. And I pray that our homes will be filled with prayers. Genuine prayers and our homes will feel the genuine love. In this days, we are seeing love that is no more genuine. We act like we love each other, but deep in the heart, the heart is so deceitful. The Bible says that we can know it. And so, cover yourself with prayers, cover yourself with the word of God. Cover yourself with prayers and with the word of God. Let the word of God take charge over your family. Sorry, it's like my body was kind of too low. I don't know if you are hearing me already. I'm low, so cover yourself with prayers and read the word of God. There are temptations in the real world. Temptations are in the real world. And the devil is not happy. With a godly family, he knows the tag upon a godly family. There's a tag upon a godly family. He knows this. And so, he always wants to manipulate and destroy the effect of God, the hand of God upon a godly family. It's dangerous. In this part of the world, in America, we see genuine love when people love each other. You know it. They hold each other's hand. They play together. They go for camping together. There is no excuse. In Africa, we might say we love each other. I love you. I love you. But you see, you know, you know, it's not anywhere you see this genuine love. Husbands and wives are together. Children are together. That's the way it should be. Whoever the man or the woman is saying that, hey, you still your own, I still my own, there is a big problem. Ain't God wrong. The devil will attack. The devil is already attacking on the ground. And they are pretend and deceived right now in marriages. That's why, as a Christian, as a woman, please, except if you yourself, your hands are not clean. Come on. Your hands are not clean, my brother, my sister. You will be lying to yourself, you will be pretending to yourself because you know that your hands are not clean. You are not holy, you are not pure. How can you be in the church and you are not holy, you are not pure? Why? Why should you be in the church? You say you are holy and yet the holiness is not in sin. You will of course your neck starting out to sin. Don't allow your wife to sin. Marriage couples, for husband and wife, for their children, enjoy the same. Even when you get old, when you get old, that is when you want to enjoy yourself. When you have messed up outside, when you have destroyed the enjoyment you're supposed to enjoy, and the leftover you're bringing it home, why? Why do you bring the leftover home? Your family loves you. It's your family that will. You have the end of time, the family that you disregard, the family that you brush off, that you see as nothing. Husband and wife love you both. The devil is how they searching for married couples to destroy them. Looking for married couples to destroy them. And he's doing it. A lot of married couples are 
so high, you will not know the truth. Even when the Lord opens your two eyes, if you don't attack yourself from the hands of the enemy, you'll be there. You'll be cutting up in the house of the enemy. Don't be an handicap in the house of the enemy. Pray, the Lord will bless you as you listen in Jesus' name. And as you pray, as you heal and say, yes, like one room, an American movie, I know, a black American movie. The movie is called War Room. This woman took charge over a marriage, over her home. Do the same thing for yourself. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray for the book of Isaiah chapter 43. Just like I was saying. But now don't say the Lord has created you, O Jacob. And he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Let me read it a little bit louder. I believe that people have already started waking up and there should be like a form of a, a bulletproof in this building that should separate my voice from other people's voices because right now I can hear other people's voices talking so I believe I can only hear my house the TV in my house is already my family is already awake right now I'm in a quiet place we just lodged and just in a warm bedroom with a living room and a toilet. So I'm inside the toilet. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. I'm sitting on the floor right now. I can see you. <laughs> I'm on the floor. I can see you. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's not beautiful. Yes, we got a color. Hallelujah. And so God is talking to us. He said, I have formed you. I know you. He knows husband and wife. The moment you get married, your names are already registered in heaven. He knows you and he knows the kind of children you are going to give back to. And let us start praying now. Huh? He said, But now don't say the Lord has created the O Jacob and he that formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have formed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. He said, Thou art mine. So that means that the enemy is also still dragging God's children away from his hand. And let me tell you, if you are not careful, if I'm not careful, he will drag us away. And a lot of things are going on that the devil is dragging people away from the arms of God gradually. God believes in commandments, he's the God of commandments. If you choose another God, he will release you, he will allow you to go to another God. And God does not want you to go to another God. That's why He's talking to you. He's talking to me. Ah, I pray that we will understand. I pray. I pray. Even Christians who call themselves Christians still don't even understand. Why? Why will Christians who are born again, this flesh will rot away one day. This flesh, the beauty and the glory and all the glamour you see outside, it will be destroyed one day. And your life, only your soul will remain one day. Why will you destroy your soul for just the beauty of this world? Why? Some people will say, let me just enjoy it now. Let me go and rot in hell. Do you know how many years it takes to stay in hell? Why will you want to destroy your family tree? Why will you want to destroy your marriage? Why will you want to destroy your life for the, just the little enjoyment, pleasure that you're going to get from that? And I'm also talking to unmarried couples, so unmarried people, people that are not married yet. Learn, learn today. Go to church, go to the Bible reading church, and learn the word of God before you go get married. And go and have training on marriage before you get married. Is it not? You go and allow the devil to control your home or to you. Allow Jesus into your home. He said, But now don't say the Lord. A created thing. God said He created us. He's the one that created us. God said He's not the devil that created us. The devil is not the one that created you. He's God. And this God says, I know you. The person I formed you. Look, I came from Minnesota to Duluth. Look at the highway. Come and see the glory of God. Come and see the mountain, the trees, the valleys, all around. The chief, the king of kings, created everything. I see the glory of God, oh my God, you create.
needed all this things, all this mad things, this torture, this animal, just for our own comfort, just for our pleasure, just for our beauty, just to make us be happy. And why are we going to be so wicked to you? Why? Oh man, why are you doing this? Ah. Let me move to fast forward to my daily manner today. My daily manner is actually from where I'm supposed to read from in my daily manner is from 18 to 21. So I'm going to start from 18 to 21. It says, Remember you know the former things. Neither consider the things of old. So those things that are past, your disappointments, the troubles, the challenges that have happened in your life, forget about them and move on. Everybody one way or the other challenge for the other. They've had a testing period, a trying period. People have laughed at you. People have put your table before their before their dining table at the chair. You have been a a radical. But God says, take your eyes away from those things. Take your eyes away from those things. Hold on to him. God created those people who laughed at you, who made you stuff. God will lift you up. He will lift you up. On my search of scripture again, I saw uh, David and Absalom. David did not delight over the death of Absalom. Rather, David said, Oh my son, my son. Absalom was about taking over the kingdom of David, his own father. Fortunately for Absalom, he was supposed to be the next heir. But he was not patient enough. In fact, everything all boiled down to sin. Because David sinned, Absalom also sinned, and Absalom wanted to retaliate, and Absalom wanted to take over the throne. But where I'm really going to is that David loved Absalom so much that he didn't want his son to die. And when the son died, he cried over the death of his son. And David is always like that. He loves people. And a part of the memory was in the first scripture I read, I think from Proverbs, is saying that don't rejoice over the fall of your enemy. That's where I'm really going to. Never rejoice over the downfall of your enemy. Don't rejoice over them. Rather, Pray for them. Pray for them if they are not dead. Pray for your enemies because when you rejoice over them, I think the Bible verse also said that God may be perfection. God will take away, you know, the wrath that they want to pour upon your enemy. So that means that when you rejoice over your enemy, that wrath that God wants to pour upon your enemy might come to you. So never you rejoice over your enemy. Pray for your enemy and always be cautious. Pray for your enemy, care for your enemies. Pray for them. Don't indulge in what they are doing. Don't delight in what they are doing. Pray that God will touch their hearts because we are human beings. The heart is also tender. Though the heart is wicked, who created the heart? Is it not God? No matter how wicked they are, there will be a time that uh, it should be, your, your heart should change. Wickedness should be taken away from your heart. Look at uh, Saul. Saul. Saul was after David's life. Even before he was after David's life. The Bible said that the evil spirit came into his heart. And Saul was so wicked and so mean. He started doing evil things. The Bible said that David, a little boy, started playing the instrument. And whenever David played the instrument, the heart of Saul would change. And be so nice and so pleasant. And when David stopped playing the instrument, so hard to be so mean and so wicked, the heart of David would the soul would change. The evil spirits would come upon him. And that's why you see, you and I, we need the Holy Spirit. We need God every time. So that the enemy will control our heart. In fact, we want the Holy Spirit to take over our heart and not the heart of wickedness or sinful nature. Lord, we help us in Jesus. Amen. I read, I read again. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall he not know it? I will even
people make a way in the wilderness. The beast of the field shall follow me, the dragon and the horse, because I give water in the wilderness. Yesterday I told you, we traveled from Minnesota and Jerusalem. They saw the wilderness. Was that a wilderness? No, that's not wilderness. That's not wilderness. That's forest. Because wilderness is a place. <laughs> it's a place of no food, no water, no anything. If you can read about the Israelites, no food, no water. They ask for food. They beg for. They beg for everything. And God should provide for them. But forest. He said, I will even make a way in the wilderness, a river in the desert. The Lord will do it for me in Jesus' name. He will do it for your family in Jesus' name. He will do it for my home in Jesus' name. Every wilderness that has become a stumbling block, that has become a form of laughter, the Lord's arm is upon it. It's breaking, destroying, it, scattering them with His precious blood in Jesus' name. Amen. The beast of the field shall honor me. Hallelujah. The beast of the field, everything around you will honor God. To glorify God in your life, for your life, for your sake, for my sake, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The dragons and the holes, because I give water in the wilderness. You see, God said, I, God, I give water in the wilderness. If God give water in the wilderness, will you not give me water to drink? Shall you not feed me? Shall you not take care of me? Will you not take care of me? He will take care of me. He will take care of my family. He will take care of my home. He will take sickness away. That sickness that wants to bind, bind us and put us in one place. Like I said, we can't move forward. We can't move backward in the wilderness. Look at the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years. Abba, what is this now? 40 years and they did not reason. They did not think. They did not say, what is going on? Let's even do something. Ask for mercy. They did do so. God said so that every one of them died in the wilderness. I will not die in the wilderness in Jesus. I will cry out, I will pray in the name of Jesus. Every wilderness, I turn it around to glorify the name of God. And God will do something new in Jesus' name. He has done it in Jesus' name. Amen. So give drink to my people, my chosen. Hallelujah. This people have I formed for myself, and they shall show forth my praise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful. We are grateful for what you have done and what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Stay blessed. The Lord loves you in Jesus' name. Just like everybody says, the Lord loves you more than I do. <laughs> I bless you. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much for following me. May the Lord strengthen you. Pray for me. I'm also praying for you. For the salvation of your soul. For a new home, a new family. For those that the enemy is, all, is already haunting their homes. I pray that the Lord in Jesus' name will take away all those challenges away from your family, from your home. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. God bless.